Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about understanding the loop statements in Java. So first of all understand why do we need loop statements. So generally whenever you are dealing with some data structures in Java which can store multiple elements. For example we saw array which can store multiple elements. String is also basically technically a character array which is storing multiple characters. So whenever you have these kind of data structures where you have multiple elements being stored in the same uh, then in that case you would like to have a way to iterate or access all of the elements in a seamless fashion. One of the ways is to access them individually one by one but that's too much of work. That's too much of code. There has to be a simpler way of accessing all the elements one by one if I want to and that's where the majority of the use cases for using loops coming to picture. Now Java provides multiple constructs to write loops in Java. There is a while loop, there is a do while loop, there is a for loop, there is also an enhanced for loop and in the previous versions of Java a use case of iterator was also very popular. So there are multiple ways in which you can actually iterate over a collection and access all the elements of the collection one by one and you can use it to multiple useful cases. For example, if you have a huge array of employee salary and you want to give bonus to each of the employees and add the bonus to the salary, then you need to do this addition for all the employees. It would be nice to have to return a while loop and the while loop can automatically access all the employee salary one by one and keep adding the bonus to the salary. This would be an easier way to do this rather than individually updating each employee's salary. And the first loop statement we are going to understand is a while loop. So the syntax of while loop is very straightforward. You write the while keyword, you enter the actual condition which will be evaluating to a boolean true or false. So you write the expression which will be a boolean expression exactly similar to the conditions which you uh, use to write in your if statements. So you write your condition which will evaluate to either true or false and then you write your statement and these statements will keep executing till the time this particular expression evaluates to true. So generally the way it works is that it will enter the while block. It will evaluate the expression. If the expression becomes true then the statements inside this particular while block will be executed and after the uh, execution of the statement it will again go back again evaluate the expression we call them steps basically. So it will go to the next step again evaluate the expression if this again if this still holds true it will again go inside execute the statement move on to the next step it will again go to the evaluation. So this this loop will continue to go till the time this condition will hold true. If it still doesn't make sense for you don't worry we will have a demo of it to make you understand how to use the while loops and maybe it's a good idea to switch to the IDE and look at an example of it. So I have already created while demo for it. Here it is. It looks very small and simple but it will get to the point where we can understand how and why will be will we be using the while loops. So I've created a while demo class. I've added a public static void main method here which is the entry point. I have declared a variable which is int count equal to 1. So the count value is 1 right now and then I'm writing a condition here. I'm saying while count is less than 10 do this. So it will print the current value of count and after that I'm using the post increment unary operator. If you remember we covered this in the previous sessions. What is the meaning of this? It basically will increment the value of count by one. This expression is, e is equivalent to if I write it in this way. If I write count equal to count plus one. This is exactly the same as this. No difference. So this will have the same impact. I will just remove this line because we already have the count plus plus here. So if we try to understand this we are basically incrementing the count and then checking the condition again. So at first time it will be 1 less than 10. Yes that is true. It will go inside and print the count value the current count value which will be 1 and then it does count plus plus. So now the count value becomes 2. It will again go back here again check the condition saying is 2 less than 10. Yes that is true. So the while condition again becomes true. It will again go inside this print the current value of count which is 2 then do count plus plus. So it will again increment the value of count. So the now the count value becomes 3. 
again go back here at condition and saying is 3 less than 10 yes that is still true again come here print the 3 again go here make count as 4 4 less than 10 prints 4 again count plus plus count becomes 5 and so on and so forth it will keep doing that till the value becomes 10 so at a step when count plus plus results in the count value being updated to 10 it will go here and say is 10 less than 10 now that is not true because 10 is equal to 10 but 10 is not less than 10 so this condition will become false and it will exit of this while loop and it will come here and it will execute if there's if there was anything written after the while loop that will be executed so that's the idea that you want to do something till a particular condition holds true then you can use the while loop define your condition and execute the statements and try to do something which changes the state of this condition here i'm changing the count so that every time a new evaluation happens if i comment this this will result in an infinite loop because one will always be less than 10 i will not be incrementing the count here and it will keep running forever it will never stop it will just keep printing one 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 every time till your computer program runs out of the memory so always remember not to end up into an infinite loop that's probably one of the biggest mistakes any beginner programmer does so please try to be aware of that particular uh, loophole not try to run an infinite loop always try to write something in the code block which can change the state of the condition and also make sure that that state condition sometimes sometime should become false you should also make sure that that always that always becomes false because if i do this if i do this then this condition will always remain true because it is already one then it will become zero then it will become minus one minus two minus three so on and so forth but that value of count will forever be less than 10 and again you will never be able to exit this loop your program will be stuck in this loop till your program runs out of the memory so always remember to write a, a statement or a, a statement of execution in your in your code block which can change the state of the condition which results in some eventual time when this condition becomes false this condition has to become false eventually otherwise you will never come out of the loop always remember that so if we run this program now let's observe the output so we can see here this particular statement is printed for 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and that's it after 9 the moment the count plus plus resulted into the count value becoming 10 it checked that condition and then it just came out of the loop because 10 is not less than 10 and the condition became false so always do something inside your code block which results at least of one scenario where this condition becomes false and that is how you can use the while loop now you can see this is a pretty generic code and you can write any kind of condition here write any code you want to execute here and then do something to change the state of the condition as well in a positive way in a way which results this particular condition to be false at some point of time and then your while loop will run fine so this is all i wanted to cover in terms of the while loop we have a lot of more exciting stuff coming in in terms of different loops but for this session i think we will we will stop here at the while loop understanding and in the next session we are going to understand how our do while loop works and if you like this video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please do not forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next lecture